Hello, this is the Journey Till Podcast, and I'm your host, Sean Zanotti. I believe life is about the journey, not the destination. To find the journey in every step of the road, the highs and lows, the twists and turns, the ups and downs, it's in that, it's in those moments that makes life so beautiful. Our guest today has a journey of his own. The New York Times has called Peter Shankman a rock star who knows everything about social media and then some. He's a five times best selling author, entrepreneur, and corporate keynote speaker with three startup launches and exits under his belt. Peter is recognized worldwide for his new ways of thinking about customer experience, social media, PR, marketing, advertising, and ADHD. Please help me welcome Peter to the show. Peter, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, well, I have been in PR myself for the past 13 years, and I have used um, many of your resources and leaned on them over the over the time of my career. So I'm really honored to have you here on the show. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got started um, and, and what was your journey like to this moment? That's a loaded question. So I... Um, wasn't supposed to be doing any of this. I was in graduate school studying fashion and portrait photography. Um, you know, it was one of those things that uh, I sort of fell into. Um, with 18 credits to go, I lost my financial aid. The government sent us a letter, sent me a letter that said, your parents make too much money. We're taking away your financial aid. I sent them back a letter that said, my parents do make too much money. However, they keep it. And uh, the government didn't find that funny. So <laughs> I moved back to New York in, I guess, spring of 95. Um, was hanging out in something called the Melrose Place TV gossip chat room on America Online. Mm -hmm. um, someone in that chat room said, hey, you know, my company is trying to uh, build a um, build a, a newsroom. Uh, why don't you guys, um, why don't you send me your resume? I went, sure, that'll be perfect. I have absolutely no experience um, uh, working in a newsroom except for what I did in college. This will be great. And two weeks later, I was being moved down to Virginia to help launch the America Online Newsroom. And mm -hmm. so I became one of three founding editors of the newsroom. And we, we, we ran this ridiculous sort of, you know, bare bones newsroom, but we built online news. Online news did not exist before us. And, uh, you know, we were, we were out there every day figuring out ways to make it work. We were doing deals with the Associated Press, with Reuters, with everything, trying to get their feeds and, and, and import them and, and, then we started covering our own news. We covered the Democratic Republican conventions. We covered uh, our Olympic Park bombing. I mean, all these incredible mm -hmm. things that that had never been covered digitally before. And, and it was this amazing time. I learned more in those two and a half years than I did in journalism school. And um, when I came back to New York after I left AOL, um, I realized that AOL kind of screwed me in that they, um, as long as you got the job done, they didn't care how you worked. I remember I got home and I'd gotten an offer to work in a magazine. And my first week there, like, all right, you have a meeting at 8 a.m. And then you have an editorial meeting at 10.30 a.m. And this is da, 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 an hour for lunch. And I'm like, this is Russia. And that did not go well. And so I quit and I went out on my own. And I actually told my parents, I said, I'm going to start a PR firm. And I said, when it fails, mm. not if it fails, when it fails, yes, I'm, I'm going to get a real job because I, 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 was so sure I would fail. Well, it's been 24 years and I haven't had to get a real job. So I consider that kind of lucky. Um, a lot of luck, a lot of hard work, a lot of busting my ass. Um, there is a, uh, you know, quote, Abe Lincoln, it's attributed to Abe Lincoln where he says, um, I'm a big believer in hard work and I find the harder I work, or a big believer in good luck and I find the harder I work, the more of it I have. So, you know, it's been 24 years busting my ass, but having a such a great time doing it. Such an amazing time doing it. Um, I'm very fortunate that everything I've been doing has really just been so much fun and 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 such a blast to do. Um, I'm trying to. I have an eight year old daughter. I'm a single dad, and I'm trying to explain to her that that if it feels like you know, if, if the best day is when you come home and you don't really know if you were working or playing, that's the kind of job you want to follow, right? You want to make sure that you're having such a good time that you don't know whether or not you've been working or playing all day. You've just been having fun. And um, I hope I'm doing a good job getting her to understand that, but that's sort of how I live my life. So, you know, I did AOL for a couple of years, came home, started this PR firm, um, ran the PR firm for several years, eventually sold it to a larger agency when the dot-com boom was, was fading, which was sort of good timing. 
consulted for more several years, several years after that. And eventually, you know, I'd, I'd be traveling a lot for work and, and on a plane, I'm massively ADHD. And so on a plane, unless I fake my death, uh, you're pretty much going to know everything about, I'm going to know everything about you by the time we land. I'm, I'm naturally curious. And so I would sit down and I'd talk to the guy on the plane. I, I'd build this Rolodex. And over time, I just had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in this Rolodex. And um, it was crazy how many people I knew, right? And who were doing this and who were doing that. And over time, I just started, uh, you know, there's so many people there. I was like, okay, there's got to be something that I can do here to utilize that. I wonder if reporters are always looking for sources. And I, so I sent an email to my reporters, all the reporters I knew. I said, hey, I'm, I know a shit ton of people, right? If you're ever doing something, they need some, 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 a source, give me a shout. Chances are I know someone. I'm not pitching anything. I'm just offering them. And, um, you know, I had the usual couple of reporters, somebody to hell, but the rest of them, they'd call every once in a while and say, hey, we're working on whatever, um, you know, who do you know? And I'd say, oh, you know, um, I know this person or that person. And, and that led to what is now known as Harrow. Uh, it, it, it led to me starting an email newsletter and the email newsletter blew up and I moved it to the web and Harrow was born. And three years after I, I started, I, I, it was acquired. Uh, I get very, very lucky on that. And so since then, I've been consulting. I've written several books. I'm a talking head on a lot of TV networks, uh, TV news programs, and um, just having fun, you know, just, just trying to have a good time. And like I said, being a single dad, uh, past 13, 14 months has been a bitch. Uh, yeah. I'm denying that, but, you know, um, learned that, that all my daughter's teachers have lied to me. She is not a pleasure to have in class. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we're getting through it. And there we are. Well, absolutely. You're doing a great job, um, an unbelievable job. Thank you. Um, I'm, a, I'm a single mom, so I understand what oh, it's yeah, like you it. as a single dad. I completely understand your world. Trust me when I say that. Um, um, you know, in regards to help a reporter out, what you were just speaking of, essentially you're a, you're a visionary. Um, what tips can you give someone else who may be listening or watching and um, they may also get that bug and may not know how to follow that bug of, of, of you know, stepping out and maybe saying goodbye to the corporate world and stepping out on their own. Um, how can you advise someone out there? What tips can you give to someone who may be um, uncomfortable in, in making that, that next step? One of the key things to understand is, is this. You, what's the best way to put this? We live in an environment where, for lack of a better word, anything is possible, right? Yeah. And I hate using that because I know that different people, different segments of society have different advantages and disadvantages. And I'm not... I'm not making light of that or, 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 or making that less of a thing, because it's not. But I have tried really hard to surround myself with people that like to see the positives in life and not the negatives. And there are a lot of people out there who like to see the negatives. Um, it's a great movie that came out in the early 2000s called The Wackness. And it's mm. it's a play on 1994 New York under Giuliani when he was only 50% psychotic. Back in the day, New York City back in the day. So that, I mean, the, the soundtrack is off the charts. It's, it's Tupac, it's it's Biggie. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing soundtrack. But the movie is about a kid, uh, 17 years old, 18 years old, just graduating high school, no idea what he wants to do with his life. And he meets this girl and the girl says a line that's always stuck with me. She goes, you know what your problem is? You know what your problem is, Shapiro? You only see The Wackness. And she goes, he goes, I do? He goes, she goes, yeah. Now look at me, mm -hmm. I see the dopeness, but you, mm -hmm. you just see the wackness. And it, that line has stuck with me since the second I heard it. You wanna surround yourself with people who see the dopeness, right? We live in this incredible world. And even if it doesn't seem like that all the time, cause it's not, but yeah. it still is a lot. And even just living here, you have the power just by the very fact that you're alive and living here to attempt to make change, right? If you want to make things better. Um, I always, I'm always, every time I, so my daughter decided she wanted a dog, which of course meant I was getting a dog. And uh, we take the dog out every day. And there are times she comes up to school, oh, I don't want to take the dog out. She's like, "Where does go to the same dog park. I'm like, all right, let's go for a walk and find a new dog park. Let's go for a walk and find a new playground, whatever. Something to, I don't allow her to say that she's bored, mm -hmm. right? Because bored is a terrible word. Our, we live in a world that the majority of us have seen less than 0.0001% 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, of. 
I mean, even the inside of our mind goes on forever. It is, yeah. it is limitless. And so to say you're bored is just, it's, 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 it's insanity, right? We have the ability to design in our minds, anything we want to build, anything we want to go out and create whatever we want. And so what do I tell want to be entrepreneurs? And again, pardon my French here, work really fucking hard at something you love. Yeah. Right. Find a way to make it better. Find a way to improve something that already exists or create something new. But literally that is what we get to do. Replacing the term have to with get to changes everything as well. And so I found that, you know, for me, for someone who's ADHD, I have to put certain processes into play to allow myself to do the kind of things I want to do the way I want. You know, I am a better person when I exercise in the morning, right? So I make sure that I am up at whatever time I have to be up to work out to give me that dopamine I need in my brain. Now, there are times when uh, I don't want to, right? And so I sleep in my workout clothes. And when the alarm goes off, my lights come on automatically. I don't think about it. I get up, I go to my Peloton bike and I'm pedaling before I'm even awake. If you eliminate choice, life becomes a lot easier. More businesses have been killed or haven't even gotten off the ground because entrepreneurs get caught in choice, the choice net. Eliminate the choice and just do something. You can always fix it later. There are two sides to my closet in my bedroom and they're labeled. One side says office slash travel and a t-shirt and jeans. The other side says speaking slash TV and it's button down shirt, jacket and jeans. And that's it. The, uh, the, uh, my suits, my vests, my sweaters, all this stuff's in my daughter's closet. Cause if I had a look every day, oh wow, what should I wear today? Oh my God, that sweater. I remember that sweater. Laura gave me that sweater. I wonder how she's doing. I should look her up. It's three hours later. I'm naked in the living room on Facebook. I haven't left the house. Right. And so eliminate that choice and allow yourself to keep moving forward. Forward motion is thrilling. Um, if nothing else, find a way to move forward a little bit every single day. I love that. Um, the New York Times has called you, quote, a rock star who knows everything about social media and then some. How did you mastermind the social media landscape? And um, if you could also maybe share some tips in that world, the social media space as well, if someone is interested in growing their social media following, uh, what would you suggest they in that they do? What's the, the best way to do, go about doing that? I think that? a lot of it has to do with the fact that I also spent a good deal of time trying everything new. So for me, I can't tell you where your, uh, where your audience is. You have to know where your audience is. You have to figure out where is your audience? What are they, where are they hanging out? I can't tell you that only you can know that. But the best way to find that out is to ask them. Ask your audience where they are. Ask them where they hang out online. Ask them what they do online, right? Being able to give them the content they want when they want it is going to make you beloved, right? So how do you get beloved? You give them what they want by asking them what they want first. And I find that that is tremendously beneficial. If you're able to create content that people want, they will engage with it. Too many people are using social media still to this day, I don't know why, as a platform to hear their own voice. Mm -hmm when what you want to be doing is using social media as a platform to engage with others and listen to what they have to say. I think far too many people are spending time um, just posting without figuring out what's the most beneficial for their audience. If you can do that, if you could find out what that is first, you will find yourself very, very happy. I think way too many people um, don't use social media for the best intentions. Having an audience, and this is probably the first lesson I learned, probably one of the best lessons I learned, having an audience on any platform is a privilege. It's not a right. Okay, you don't have the right to an audience. You're not born with the right to an audience. You're born with the right to create useful and quality content. 
And when you do that, you may get an audience from it. And if you do, and you continue to create that content, they'll stick around. Um, I equate it to wearing spandex. Uh, when I'm, I don't have the, very few people in this world have the right to wear spandex. Uh, when I'm training for a race for six months, I'm doing it in bulky t-shirts and, and shorts. When I run my race, I've earned the right for that day to wear spandex, earned the privilege for that day to wear spandex. When the race is over, I get my medal and someone comes over and says, here, please put this on, put this bulky t-shirt on. But, you know, I, I joke about that, but it's very true. It's the same thing with, um, with content. Create great content and your social following will grow. Ask your audience how they like to get their information. And then one of my secret tips that I've been doing since probably 2005, and I was fortunate, my, both my parents were public school teachers and then they were NYU professors. And I'd, I'd ask them to give me some of their students one Saturday every three months. And I'd meet the kids at like 11.30 in the morning and, and I'd buy them all a pizza. And we'd sit at a, in a pizza restaurant. I'd take over the whole place and like 20 kids. And I'd say, just work, just do whatever you wanna do. Just don't let me stop you. Just talk to your friends, do whatever. And I'd watch them on their phones. And I'd see what apps they were using as they were using them. And if I didn't recognize one, I'd say, oh, what is that? And they'd tell me about it and I'd immediately go grab my screen name on it. Um, and because of that, I have, I have at Peter Shank on every single platform out there. Um, you want to be first and you want to make sure that if, even if you don't use it yet, I have, I have my screen name on, on TikTok. I rarely use TikTok, right? Um, I have it on Snapchat. I have it on Instagram. It's all the same as at Peter Shankman. And I've deliberately done that because uh, I want to make sure that I am, uh, you know, that, that, that it's as easy as possible to find. Is there a certain um, platform that you, you gravitate to more than another? And if so, what is that? I'm a big fan of, of Instagram and I'm on Twitter. Twitter is a cesspool, but I'm on it because it's, it's useful in some ways. Um, I mean, everything's pretty much accessible on, online. You know, it, I'm on Reddit. Uh, I find a lot of good information on Reddit, but again, Reddit's a cancer. Um, you know, I, I, I got banned from the ADHD subreddit because they don't believe that, that ADHD is a gift. They believe it is a, um, uh, they believe that it is a curse and, and I just don't agree with that. So I am being forced to, uh, to uh, I, I don't go on that, on that, on that subreddit anymore because they, they, they don't subscribe to the theory that, that you can actually use ADHD to your advantage, but it is what it is. Can you talk about, I know you, you have a breakthrough network, which is an elite um, online mastermind of thought leaders, business experts, uh, change makers, influencers. Uh, tell me how did that come about? And once you're allowed to be part of this, elite group, what is it that um, one is able to experience from this mastermind? For me, it's accountability. So I have a group with about 55 people in it and we get together on the phone twice a week uh, or via Zoom or whatever, twice a week. And we just, we, we, we chat about anything. Who needs help with anything? Who's working on something? Who needs a kick in the ass to get something done? And we have a Slack group as well, but the goal really is to build uh, the group that we have and to, to, to the point or to build, to build each other up within the group that we have so that we are allowed to create um, whatever it is, right? And help, help each person get better in what they're doing. Sometimes it's as simple as uh, uh, someone calls us, hey, can someone in a different time zone call at 5 a.m. and make sure that I'm awake? I wanna work out tomorrow and if no one calls, I know I need to do this, which is awesome. Right. Other times, hey, I'm in California. I need a, a good place for dinner in L.A. or I'm in this. I need a designer, whatever. And that's really our goal. Our goal is to build a network that allows people to do that. And, and, and I don't it's not a, it's not I don't do it to make a fortune. I, I charge very little for it. Um, whenever I meet other people in masterminds, they're all like, I can't believe how little you're charging is crazy. But I wish that something like that existed when I was uh, in school or when I, when I was in school, when I was in uh, running my own company because it didn't. And I would have killed for that. I remember as soon as I sold my company, I get these emails. Oh, you should join a mastermind. It's only $50,000 a year. I'm like, okay, number one, bitch, where the hell were you when I was building this? Number two, if I had $50,000, uh, yeah, I wouldn't need you. Right? So that was a huge thing for me. So I wanted to be able to give back in that, in that way, in that environment. I think everyone should be part of a group or a mastermind at some point. Uh, ours is called Shank Minds, but you know, whichever one works for you, I think, I think you should be, it's, it's entrepreneurship is hard as hell alone. It's hard. It is hard. The ups and downs and you do you need people to lean on. And I think the important component of that too, is to find um, like-minded people and people that can help. You can help each other grow at different times in life. So I think it's amazing what you're doing. Um, and that network is, is, is there something, is there a story that you can share that you're willing to share maybe with the audience of someone that, that has been you know, that's been part of this network of this, this elite network and, um, you know, how this, how it's helped them grow and blossom. I mean, there's tons of ways. I mean, one of them is I, there's a guy in our network who I introduced, 
I introduced to a contact of mine at a major computer corporation. He's been a consultant for them now for three years. Um, uh, he was working hourly prior, wasn't that happy, is now been a consultant to this company. From that, it led him to, to basically starting his own business where he has four people working for him, uh, running several uh, consultants, consultant gigs, um, and just bought his own house. So, you know, it, it's stories like that that really make me happy. Um, you know, I've made great friends there. We've all made great friends there. Uh, I, I, I know a lot of people to begin with, but now it's a lot nicer way to get, uh, hey, I'm in LA, guys. Uh, who am I seeing tonight? Right? Or I'm in, I'm in Washington or wherever. And it's, it's, it's really nice. It's nice to know that I have a, uh, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To have a uh, tribe somewhere, wherever I need it. Yeah, that tribe's important. Can you talk about yourself a bit, your mindset? Um, you know, this, this entire conversation, it seems you're a person that is giving. You're, you're consistently giving and thinking of ways to continue of giving of service. Um, what drives you? What is your passion? What, what really, what motivates you and keeps you going, keeps you ticking? The first one is to constantly get better. The second one is my daughter. Um, I'm always looking for new experiences. I'm, I love being on the road. I love traveling, speaking. Is, is sort of my lifeblood. I love being on stage. It has been a bitch these past 16 months not to speak. Um, my last keynote, I did I did an open keynote in Austin uh, last month in person, which was really nice, but those, those, those are starting to come back now, which is good, but my God, I miss those. Um, travel is huge for me. Um, I'm always trying, I'm, I'm, I like to be on the road as much as possible. I, I reset myself. And then, you know, again, finding things you can do that keep your brain happy. Uh, you know, I'm a licensed skydiver. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, do I do? I'm a triathlete. I'm currently training for the Ironman in Kona in October, um, which I should I should mention. Uh, Shankman.com slash Ironman. I'm doing it to raise money for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society because I've lost a few a few family members to Leukemia and Lymphoma. So mm. Shankman.com slash Ironman. I'm trying to raise uh, 150 grand. I'm about halfway there right now. So um, okay. anything uh, along those lines would be beneficial. But yeah, for me, it's really about finding new ways to have fun and enjoy this thing called life. You have three startups under your your belt where you startups and exits. And I'm a business owner and I know the, you know, it's full of the highs and lows. What is it? What is the key to knowing when to get in business and then when to get out and then move on? I could have run Harrow for another 10 years. I would have had to grow it. I would have had to hire people. I would have had to become a boss and a manager. I hate that shit. That's not what I want to do. So for me, the right time to get out was when I would have to do that. I could take a... Um, I could take a uh, the, the money they, they gave me, or I could try to do it for 10 years and probably make a few bucks more, but would I have been happy? Would that have been 10 years of happiness? Probably not. And there's no guarantee it would have sold anyway. So, you know, I am in a great, uh, my, my belief in that regard is when you're not having as much fun or things change and the fun has sort of gone away, maybe it's time to look for something else. Get, if you, can you change it? If so, do it. If not, maybe it's time to look for somewhere else. Um, do you follow is, do you have like a gut feeling and you kind of follow your gut feeling? Is that how you, when I live and die with my gut. I'm a licensed skydiver and you know, it is the only thing I do in my life that, that my gut says, Oh, you know, you don't have to do this. Everything else. I listen to my gut a hundred percent. You know, we have instinct for a reason. It has saved us from being eaten by alligators. It has saved us from being eaten by saber tooth tigers. It has stopped us from walking down alleys that don't look, you know, safe. We have it for a reason. The only time I've really screwed up in my life is when I haven't listened to it. Me too. So I get it. I would like to wrap up this segment with um, with a part of the show that I call Tell and Tell, which is a play on the words show and tell. What is something that you can tell us about yourself um, that you have not shared before with the world? Some A sort of secret, if you will. Um, it may be the a secret to finding the best digital product for your brand or your secret to uh, how you get up every day or your, your thought process or, you know, I, just throwing some things out there. But you know, the, the secret about, about finding a group who's younger than you and, and interviewing them and getting the information about what apps to use and things like that is, is a very valid one and that will still stay. But I can tell you that for me, my entire house is automated. My shades are automated. My lighting is automated. Everything is automated in my apartment. And that allows me to, um, to you know, it's, it's kind of hard to stay asleep when your lights are sort of coming on at 3.50 in the morning and by 4 a.m. It's, it's daylight in your room, right? Echo, house lights 100%. You'll see what happens in about you know five seconds all the lights will come on and that but that happens automatically in this regard in that um everything is done uh without my having to think about it so at 4 a.m the lights are on and i'm awake right see they just pop up. and so that is 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 for me probably the bet you know the more you can automate the less you have to think about the less chances you have to get to screw up right you're not going to get up early if 
if you have to think about it, you go back to bed, but if lights are on and, and my shades are up and, and I'm in my workout clothes, yeah. Thoreau once said, simplify, simplify. And he wasn't wrong. That was beautiful. Well, if someone is out there and they would like to follow you on your journey, what is the best way for them to find you? So my entire life is at shankman.com. My email is peter at shankman.com. And I'm at, Shank, at Peter Shankman on all of the socials. I, I always respond to my own emails. You guys are welcome to do that. Um, if you send a uh, if you send the word Shankman as a text to 44222, uh, you can also sign up uh, for my mailing list or just uh, shankman.com. Uh, you'll see the mailing list uh, up there as well. But yeah, that is, that is um, uh, without question, I, I love talking to people. So feel free to reach out. Well, thank you so much. I enjoyed this conversation. You are amazing. I have you, I'm honored to just be in your presence. So thank you for being on the show. You're very kind. The pleasure was mine. Happy to do it. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for this episode of the Journey Told podcast. I'm going to leave you with words that my father so often said to me, and that's to be the best version of you that you can be. Until next time, folks, let that sizzle in your spirit.